Adam Grenda. This is my wife, Tana Grenda. And we have recently built our dream hangar house in remote Alaska. We live in King Salmon, which is about 300 miles southwest of Anchorage, kind of at the top of the Alaska Peninsula and uh, pretty remote in the bush. We don't have any roads or anything that get, um, get to where we live. We have to have everything barged in or flown in um, on cargo airplanes. And we have manifested this dream for many years, pretty much ever since we got married about eight, nine years ago. And we wrote down, we want to own a hangar house. That is the coolest we thing. We don't know how, but we're going to. <laughs> how are we going to afford a hangar house? We never knew we were going to live here. And that dream has finally come true. And a big portion of that, we'd like to thank Schweiss for because we did a lot of planning and research and they were pretty instrumental in that because when you build a hangar house, one side of your entire house, your whole family's gonna live, is the hangar door, in our case. And we wanted to do it right, and we wanted to do it one time. We didn't wanna to have to ever redo it, have any maintenance issues or anything like that. And we've ran a lot of hangar doors, both of us. We've both worked in aviation for many years, and it was a pretty easy decision to go with Schweiss. One thing that we did when we first started making these plans is we were looking for videos of people who had done this so that we knew how to do it because we, we could not mess up. Like we had to get all of our materials in order and get it all on a barge and out here at once. We couldn't be missing any materials or parts. And so we were looking all around YouTube and everywhere looking for somebody that had maybe done this and we couldn't really find much. And <laughs> So we kind of dreamed up this plan ourselves so we wanted to share with you guys how we did it because i mean going back i would do it the exact same we just we did it in a way that works for our family and the things that we like to do and having an airplane and hunting and staying active but also it's a very simple plan we didn't want anything too complex and so yeah we just wanted to showcase how we did this and i still can't even believe it's a reality obviously it's not finished yet we still have a lot of finishing work to do but once we live here like we'll probably never leave on my side of that it would have been really nice <laughs> if there would have been an alaska remote hangar house build at the schweiss store that i could have clicked on found the guy's phone number called him asked him all these questions and that's kind of why we wanted to make this video so if anyone else wants to do this even if you're not in the bush of alaska if you live in washington or something like that you can see our plans how we did it the features of the house, the features of the door, what makes it unique for our needs, and hopefully it'll help you going forward. Um, and we didn't have a whole, lot, uh, a whole lot of information. We wrote, what, 50 different drawings on a coffee table <laughs> of what we want out of a door, what we want out of a house, the features, the safety, all these different things. And Schweiss was pretty um, instrumental in making that happen because they have knowledge of many, many years in the hangar door industry, and we don't know anything. We just know that we need a door, we want a good one, and we want one that's gonna last. And so we leaned on them pretty heavily to help with the installation, how to do it, features. We changed our mind probably 18 different times. Sorry about that, Schweiss. But we finally got what we wanted. We wouldn't change anything. We just wish we had a little more money so we could finish it right now. I mean, yeah. the two biggest things that sold me on Schweiss was the straps. The straps are super solid. And I mean, I think those are rated for like 25,000 pounds a piece. We got four straps here plus the wind pin strap, but it was the maintenance. So if you look at all these hinges right here, they all have Zerk fittings. And so you come by with a grease gun and you could literally have my 10 year old daughter grease the entire door every six months, maybe once a year. Um, they have a maintenance manual that calls out for how often you do that. But you grease the hinges once a year, double check everything, check the oil inside the uh, drive box here, and that's pretty much it. It's fully maintenance free, does its thing, there's no hydraulics or anything like that you really need to worry about. Just pretty much set it and forget it. I didn't want to have the door I was going to have to work on in five or ten years, and uh, really happy with it. The bad thing about Alaska, we're so remote, we have a lot of power surges. Um, especially in the winter time. And there may be two to three days that we have to go off grid and just go on to a generator. And we're gonna have a 10,000, 10 kW generator. And that's easily gonna run our hangar door, just run by a two horsepower motor. I wanted something that we could easily hook up to a generator with a plug or have it wired into the system. So if we do have a power outage, I'm not stuck and I don't have to just stay grounded. I still wanna be flying. Not only did I want a door that was just maintenance free and 
a one-time in your life purchase. I wanted something that looked super clean. And I looked at possibly every picture, probably 40 times on Swipe's website. And this is exactly what I had pictured. I'm very happy with how it turned out. This is like a regular talking voice. It's just crazy to me still how dang quiet it is. One of the coolest things though I've never seen is this. And when Jeremy at Swice, the sales rep that I bugged probably a hundred times, he just got so annoyed, poor guy. And he told me that you can take an antenna, come over here and check this out. Only thing that runs this is that antenna right there. You screw that to the outside. I, I put it fairly high like the instructions called for. Installed that in about a half hour and you can fly over. I can be 300 feet AGL. I can hit open and the door will fully open. And it's 40, I think it's 47 seconds to fully run. And so by the time I do a quick downwind to base to final and land and taxi up here, the door is fully open and you literally just drive right in. It's the freaking coolest thing. I like using the remote as you guys can tell. I can't stand the hanger doors. You have to sit here and hold the button closed. Like if you add up how many cycles through your life you're gonna be cycling a hanger door open and close, you're gonna be sitting here for hours and hours on end just to hold a button. But this one's fully automated. It's got these photo eye sensors here, which we really like in case, you know, in my case, if there was a bike or something, or your kids left a toy, or maybe you, you were tired, you didn't pull your airplane in far enough and the tail where the tail wheel was still here, it wouldn't come down and fully crunch your airplane because it won't allow the door to close. Another amazing feature, fully automated. There's one of those metal hooks you have to come back over and hook on, and you can see all the daylight outside, and it totally seals up. These side latches right here, I got those set, and they have these two big springs inside, and I just followed the, the directions when I fully got everything set up, and I've never done a hanger door before. It was super easy. To adjust the tension on these and they say give it about one inch right here and I just kind of eyeballed it made both sides even made these even right here with this adjustment on the bolt for these ratchets and I mean you can't see hardly anything through there it's just tight so it's fully automated we live in southwest Alaska and so we get a bunch of big winds here we face the door towards our least windy direction out of the west. But sometimes in the winter we get a big west. And the big thing about a hangar door, when you have a 50 foot building, we only have a 44 foot door. So we have three feet of shear on each side, which kind of worried us with big winds and the whole end of the building racking. But Schweiss came out with this thing called a wind pin. And so if the door really starts going, it can't go any further than here. The pin's about, I think seven eighths or an inch, seven eighths, maybe an inch and you uh, draw a circle and then you drill a hole, it's about an inch and a half into your concrete about this far. And uh, I mean, if it really starts going, that's all your door can do. So it can't bend the door frame or really compromise this end of the building. And this thing's fully automated too. So when you hit the button, boom, wind pin comes up, door opens all the way. On the building, they say for a 40 foot door in the 40 to 50 foot range, on a wood building, an eight by eight side column is sufficient, but I wanted to kind of make it overkill. So we went with a 10 inch wide by 12 inch deep. Deeper's better because the door is always trying to flex in or out. And this is dug fur free of heart, so it doesn't have the center of the tree. It's less likely to twist or anything like that. And so we wanted to go overkill on the beams for a windy environment. Um, another thing I talked to the sales reps about, and I looked at a lot of pictures on Swice, was if you look up here, it looks like a giant spider web. And that's all from guys who never built hangers, but I showed them pictures, told them what I needed, and we talked to Schweiss, and you want to reinforce that last truss that basically is your header that holds the door, and you wanna come back like six, seven, eight trusses, and so all this on this side is tied into the header holding the hanger door. So it's all kind of woven in together. So the whole end of the building would pretty much have to fail for this hanger door to be compromised. So I wanted to touch on my favorite features of the door because it's important to me to have safety and also time is valuable for me. So I wanna make sure that everything is automatic and it's really easy and simple. 
we're foster parents, we have lots of children, we're adopted parents as well, and so we always have a ton of kids running around and they leave stuff everywhere and they push buttons when they're not supposed to and they park things in front of doors when they're not supposed to and they throw toys under doors when they shouldn't. And so having a door that could be automatic stop and have sensors below it if there's something under it or a kid running under it was really important, very safe. And then if they park something out in front of it, it's a bifold, so it's not gonna swing out and wreck the door, the four-wheeler, whatever they leave out there. A lot of doors have side door latches and these ones don't. I've never actually seen a door that's just this automatic before, but uh, most of them have latches and my kids are the type of kids that would go up and just hit a button to play with the button and buckle the door because the latches weren't undone <laughs> or if they forget to unlatch one and they latch the other one. So it's totally automated. You just push the button, set it, forget it, and super safe. So no latches to unlatch, it's just ready to go. And it's really quiet. And then if my kids run under it or throw their toys under there, park stuff, that sensor stops the door. And then it completely latches and I can just walk away and it's done. So that's gonna be Adam's domain is the hangar. This is my domain, this is the house portion and it was important for me to not have a really loud door especially because I do a lot of Zoom calls, I work from home, and yeah, gatherings and friends over and stuff, and that hangar is just gonna be awesome to not really be interrupted while I'm in my domain up here. So the really intimidating part for me was building this whole thing, but the functionality of this entire side is based around a hangar door, and I have never built anything, I don't have any construction experience, anything like that, I had to be kind of become a general contractor overnight. Talk to Schweiss, super, super easy to work with. And they just registered, if you can have some common sense and a little mechanical knowledge, you can do this. I got a bunch of these because this is pretty much what they generate when they generate you a quote. And this is like our Bible here. And it just goes through A1, specs, dimensions, everything like that. And it tells you we're gonna have a 44 foot wide door. The door height is, you know, from the bottom of the door, once it's all the way open, you know, 14, four and a half. The wedge at the top is 30 inches and all this stuff. And then it gives you all these specs here. And the cool part about all this is I just took this and I sent this to multiple people. I sent it to the metal, exterior metal people so they could build it. I sent it to the truss manufacturer and everything and just gave them all these specs for the engineering and stuff because I had the truss manufacturer engineer a truss that could hold 10,000 pounds on that header. It gives you the diagram here because in your head you're laying in bed at night trying to picture this. And this just made it super simple. This gives all the forces, and I ran this by a couple engineers to make sure it'd be, it would be suitable for what we need. This page talks all about how you bolt the hinges in and how many two by sixes you need. So this is all really essential when you're ordering your lumber because we shipped all our lumber up on a barge, shipped all the lumber we had up from Seattle on a barge. So we had to make sure we had enough lumber. Um, let's see. This is a really, really important part that they have the salespeople and the engineers at Swice design all this. And then I just took this page and I sent it exactly to the metal manufacturer. And I said, look, I need 44 feet wide of black. I need this trim, this trim, and this trim. And they sent the whole package up bundled and this is hangar door. So when we got to the hangar door on the outside metal siding. It was like a couple hours to put everything up. Um, this shows all the dimensions for the guys that helped us hang the door. They had never taken a hangar door and put one up before, but we gave this to them and we said, it has to be square and these are the places you drill the holes. We set it with a telehandler and a couple straps. And by the time I was back from the hardware store going to get some more screws or nails or something like that, I came back and the door was fully hung, like in two hours. It was super fast. I think three guys were working on that where other guys were finishing siding the house over here. Um, this gives you your basic outline of the whole house. Like this is your side, these are your columns. It shows you how far you're gonna span and everything like that. And then these are really important because it shows you how far back to keep stuff away from the door, you know, because there's bottom truss and different components of the door that could have an obstruction. So this is pretty much your Bible. And all we did was reference this, multiple copies, and we laminated everything so a lot of people could reference that. And this is one of the many manuals that Swice has. And they give you a full set of these. And you literally just go through 
step one, two, three. This is what I was talking about for the building columns. You know, the 44 foot door, we're in the 40 degree family. We could have got by with an eight by 10 because we're only going up to 16 feet, but I wanted to upsize it here. So we went by the 10 by 12 and uh, it shows you just how to bolt everything through the end columns. I mean, literally it's pretty easy. And if you look at this picture, right? This is what we showed them. And we said, do this up there. And that's what the guys did. They have a lot of timber frame experience, building log houses and different things like that. Tied in all these different two by sixes to all these different trusses to help support the door. So pretty much if you have this, this, and I'm just a dumb pilot and I can do it, it's pretty simple. And look at that door. 